John, thanks so much. Monsef Slaoui, of course, the chief scientific advisor to Operation Warp Speed, the government vaccines effort, now starting a new company along with uh, the team at Medici, the venture capital firm, called Centessa Pharmaceuticals. This will be funded with $250 million in Series A financing and has a new R&D model where it combines 10 private biotech companies under the same umbrella focused on everything from cancer to rare diseases and other areas. Each one will be focused on an individual drug or technology trying to kind of create this new R&D model. So Monsef Slawi will be chief scientific officer. The CEO will be Sarab Saha, who previously led translational medicine at Bristol Myers Squibb. Both of those gentlemen join us now to tell us about this new model. Uh, Monsef, Sarab, it's great to have both of you with us now. Monsef, let's start with you. you. You just finished up with the government last week. Why is this the right next step for you? And in some ways, it sounds kind of like an Operation Warp Speed for different biotech companies. Is that the right way to think about this? Hi, Meg. Thanks for having me. Well, I finished Friday evening, indeed, my role with Operation Warp Speed. But this, this actually is a concept that has been in the making for many, many years in that the concept of asset centricity, which is at the, at the essence of this company, is all about uh, creating depth of expertise, focus, nowhere to hide for scientists that really are passionate about an idea to make the medicine out of it. And I tried to apply that concept at GSK when I was head of R&D. I created what I call discovery performance units and medicine development centers, much, much smaller entities and a very large R&D organization. And that resulted in a significant improvement in output for R&D. GSK had the largest number of medicines approved and vaccines by the FDA between 2011 and 2016 as a result of that. But breaking down a large organization is very complicated and we couldn't do it all the way. In this instance, and as I joined Medici, whose philosophy is asset centricity, we were creating companies that are based on one idea, one concept, one project. And um, the scientists left whatever they were doing and, and you know, walked the talk and came after that idea to prosecute it. We decided maybe we can now build up, bottom up, a large R&D organization out of such asset-centric organization and companies and keep the philosophy in the way we, we finance uh, and manage this organization. Indeed, at warp speed, since now we have shown that the boundaries of speed and effectiveness can be, can be pushed further than what we thought before. And Sorab, as the CEO of the mm -hmm. company, I'm sure will tell you more about uh, uh, this exciting model, but we're, we're very excited about it. Yeah, well, Saurabh, so let's bring you in. I mean, tell me about the disease areas you've decided to focus on, the assets you've put together here. And also, in a model like this, where you have all these teams singularly focused on the projects that they're working on, how do you incentivize them you know, to fail fast if, they, if it turns out it's not going to work? How do you make sure that those teams have an incentive to let you know it's not going to work out? Thanks, Meg, for having us. That's an excellent question. So first of all, we're super excited to launch Centessa Pharmaceuticals. We believe this is an opportunity, as Monsef mentioned, to bottom up, create a new pharmaceutical company with a pipeline of oncology, hematology, neuroscience, rare disease, immunology, inflammation drugs, all coming together to recreate a pharmaceutical pipeline almost overnight, spanning discovery to phase three. What really is important about this model is that we're letting these subsidiary companies, the 10 of them that we brought together, function autonomously. Let them be the decision makers as opposed to having top-down management tell them what to do. They're experienced scientists and clinicians who have worked on these projects for often decades. They know the science better than anyone, and they're the ones who are going to be driving the success of these projects. And to your question, talking to these scientists, they're the first ones who will tell us, you know what, the data is not looking good. These are data-driven decisions. It's time to step away and maybe shut this program down. Alternatively, if the data looks really good, we're now at a point where we have enough capital to quickly, in an agile manner, deploy that capital efficiently to those companies that are doing well. We're very excited. Mm. Well, Monsef, you know, one thing I noticed isn't in the original portfolio of the companies you guys have put together is infectious disease. Um, you know, obviously, this is a space that you've devoted a lot of your time to, and particularly over the last year. And want to ask you also about what you're seeing with the vaccine rollout, you know, just a few days after leaving the U.S. government. Is the rollout where you had hoped and expected it would be as of right now? A lot of criticisms about a rocky rollout at the beginning. How are you feeling about it now? 
So listen, we selected the medicines uh, and the programs into uh, Centesa on the basis really of their value. They, you know, there are uh, programs that have a proof of concept established in the clinic. They are best or first in class. They, uh, they are driven by uh, great teams and you know, world experts for each one of them. Uh, and that was the basis. It wasn't a preconceived idea on which therapeutic area we should be going. That's really important because that really should be driving success and affording maximum flexibility in terms of therapeutic areas. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.